what attracts a lot of people to aquaponics is uh, this ability to grow some uh, fish in your own backyard. It is quite fantastic and very new. The kids love to see the fish and the fish production is very interesting. We have some very nice fish. So those fish are living into this fish tank. When I feed them, they go into the water. And the water is raised to the blue bed, where we got some bacteria that are transforming the fish poop into basically nitrate, which is a plant fertilizer. So, thanks to those fish that we are growing here, we can grow some very nice vegetables. And so, here we have silver perch, that is a very nice fish to grow in Australia. We can eat it once it reaches the plant size. We, are, we can also grow them from smaller fish, such as uh, goldfish. Here we got a setup that is growing from goldfish. We just need a few fish to grow variety of vegetables and you can also grow uh, some of the bigger fish uh, to eat them. So here for example we got a very nice trout. So this is a this is a very solid fish and you can grow this kind of fish in your backyard. While they grow, they're going to provide you uh, some nice uh, nitrates to grow your plants. The vegetable side of the aquaponic setup is basically the garden or the grow bed. This is where most of the productivity of aquaponics will happen. We produce almost 10 times more uh, vegetables than uh, fish in aquaponics. Just a little bit. Some onions, salad, beetroot. Celery, parsley, beetroot, nice uh, beans. Mint, tomato, silver beet, broccoli, it's growing. A um, lot of uh, lettuce that is growing as well at the back. And uh, you can see that we spread some seedlings that are just coming, coming out. All this is grown in aquaponics, uh, just thanks to the fish pool. Well, what is very important and what we can't really see are the bacteria in the aquaponics setup, right? Because basically we just want a tank for the fish tank and a grow bed, which is another tank that we sit on top of the fish tank. So that's two tanks, one on top of the other. So this is uh, the sketch of a classic uh, grow bed aquaponics. So we need a little pump. We use a, a classic uh, water pump, the smallest possible, to raise some water into the grow bed. And we're going to have a certain system in the grow bed that is going to allow the water to go back into the fish tank. So if you follow me, the water is going to go from the fish tank to the grow bed and then it's going to go back from the grow bed to the fish tank. Extremely simple, right? It's just making a loop. I advise to put maximum one kilo of fish per 50 liters of grow bed. So let's take the example of Alex, who wants to build an aquaponic setup. He targets to produce up to 10 kilo of rainbow trout per year. The size of the fish that he want to grow is going to be 300 grams so here we have a little aquaponic setup that I use for training only. So here we got the setup. This one is a, is a setup that I plug on the solar system, on the solar panel. The solar panel is just here. Uh, and here we got a little box where we basically have a battery inside. So this setup is completely off the grid. Obviously we have a little water pump inside and here we got a bell siphon. So now I'm going to show you 
uh, on the tr on the ones that I use for the training, because this one here is empty. You see the top. Normally that's a grow bed, so the grow bed here hasn't got any media. So it's going to be for me a, pers a perfect opportunity to show you. Uh, I got two kinds of media that people are using. Uh, the first one is classic gravel. Uh, and a lot of people, a lot of beginners are using this kind of media. So it works, right? You've got some bacteria that are living on the surface of this uh, gravel and they are doing the job. Uh, but it's very limited because uh, the bacteria are just living on the surface of the, of the gravel, right? So uh, the quantity of bacteria that you can have uh, on the surface of this kind of gravel is quite small. Now, if you compare with this, this is uh, the, the, a rock that we call scoria here in, uh, in Australia, and that's actually a, a volcanic rock. And you can see that it's full of holes. It's very, very porous. So obviously, uh, the bacteria are living on the surface of this, uh, of, this, of this rock. They're also living in the holes, and inside the rock, uh, all those holes they give connections to other children's cycle, it's actually cycle of life and that's basically uh, the way nature works with nitrogen in, in an ecosystem. For the environment a fish is gonna eat maybe a worm or anything. So this worm, which is organic matter such as you and I, is gonna be transformed into the fish intestina. It's gonna be broke down and it's gonna release a lot of ammonia into the water, right? And this ammonia as I said, it's toxic for the fish, and then we start a long cycle because this ammonia is going to be transformed by some bacteria in the treat. We are going through a whole cycling process in aquaponics, but you want to introduce the fish exactly at the end of the cycling process, not in the middle, not in between. And then you try to remove any extra earth that you got around the roots. So what you want to do is not to remove all the earth because otherwise it's going to be such a shock for the plant that it's going to kill the plant. But you want to remove all the extra earth that is not really in contact with the roots, you know. When you remove a pot most of the time, you've got the roots that are in the middle, but then around you've got a lot of earth. So you can remove a lot of this earth. And then when you start to see a lot of roots, you stop, you leave the, the, the earth that is remaining and you plant it. In this case, you're going to remove a lot of probability of having some insecticides, pesticides or whatever, chemical on the, on the earth that is around the roots. So that's how you introduce vegetables into your aquaponics setup.